What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, a huge, huge thanks for coming back. Uh, and if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you like what you see. So today is a pretty exciting day for me, uh, hopefully for the channel, for you guys, uh, because we are putting the truck back together. Well, it's together right now. But I'm, what I mean is throwing all of my parts for the 05 Plus axle swap on the truck so that we can start testing them. I have pretty much everything done. We still have to put the radius on brackets uh, together, but they're pretty much done. Uh, the design, everything's good. I'm gonna pull the truck back in here, get everything thrown on it, and hopefully uh, drive it. But at least have everything put together in this video. So, talking about that, we've got our coil buckets. Uh, they're fully done, fully welded. Uh, we've got our track bar. This is one. This is just one that I had uh, all tacked together. I haven't welded it yet, but just to show you kind of what that looks like. Uh, but these are the coil buckets and they are 100% done, fully welded. Um, they look freaking awesome. I love the way they turned out. Now, excuse if some of these welds don't look the best. Um, I'll get into that. But uh, I am definitely super, super happy with it. Um, I love the way they look and I think they're gonna fit freaking awesome. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna get all this stuff thrown in the truck today and we're also gonna build the two radius arm brackets. So now, like I said, a couple of those welds didn't look the best and that's basically because if you saw the uh, last week's video, I bought a new welder and I've been kind of testing it out, trying to really dial in the uh, settings. But basically, this is what I got uh, and it's a, a Millermatic 255 and this thing is a freaking beast. It is awesome. I already have it pretty much halfway figured out but this thing's definitely way more advanced uh, than that thing and that's more than anything because this thing has holes which is freaking awesome and it's gonna be a game changer for my welding but I absolutely love it. Um, I was thinking about doing an unboxing and review and stuff like that but I'm not really a welding YouTube channel so I don't think it would really fit uh, this channel but I do want to tell you guys that this thing is awesome. Right now this is, I don't see probably a little bit more than I can afford, but it is worth it. It just welds so effortlessly, um, that quarter inch, uh, and it's so, so nice. And basically what I want to do with it is really get it dialed in to where... <coughs> so basically these welds are pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with them. They are good looking welds and they are for sure strong, they're not going anywhere. Um, the ones that I definitely need to get dialed in perfectly are like this inside welds. Um, and basically why it's really important to have these ones dialed in good is because these are the ones that are gonna take me the longest time if they're not done properly. So I have to get the settings right to minimize spatter as much as possible. <coughs> it's super windy here, so hopefully it's not messing up the video, but the, uh, the reason why I wanted that welder with the poles is because it should really help minimize that splatter, uh, increase penetration, and as well as decrease warping and stuff like that. So like I said, it should be an all around great machine that should last me basically, you know, forever. Um, and having both of these is really, really gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> Especially once we can bring someone else to uh, help us, we can have someone tacking the parts, someone welding them, you know, kind of have a little bit of a production line going on so anyways super super happy with these things but don't get freaked out if some of the welds don't look too nice uh trust me whatever i sent these are for me whatever i send you guys uh, will look way better than this um another thing that i was trying to figure out as you can see i've got kind of like uh stitch welds all over the place so it's kind of weird i'm trying to figure out um what's kind of like the best way of doing this and spacing them out because um, you really don't need to weld, like throw full welds on the inside of this thing. Uh, just some stitch welds inside is more than sufficient, especially when you have all the outside corners welded solid. So I gotta figure out what looks the best uh, on the inside. But that's enough of that. Like I said, I'm super, super happy with that. Uh, the way they turned out, the way they look. Um, as you already know, one of them is already on the truck. So we are actually going to take that one out because we made a few uh, small changes. Uh, mainly, this is now a, an actual bent piece. Uh, before I had it where it was basically, um, it's still one piece, but it had a cut going down the middle so I could easily bend it by hand. But I decided that this, um, this joint right here, I did want it to be one piece and I could bend it on my brake. So I went ahead 
made it one piece so that it's one less thing that I have to weld. Um, and then we changed a little bit of the bolt uh, locations, just, uh, bolt hole locations, where they're at and stuff like that. Um, the shock placement a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's uh, definitely enough talking. I'm gonna go ahead, move the cars out of the way, pull the uh, truck back in the garage and uh, try and get this done. So let's get right to that. Okay guys, so we're gonna do a real quick uh, cold start on this thing and see how it does. Um, it hasn't been started in like two weeks, I think, since we pulled it out of the garage. So let's see how it does. Let the, well, let the uh, glow plugs run for a little bit. Ah, man, I really do miss uh, driving this truck though. So I can't wait to have it all put back together uh, for sure. So let's go. struggled a little bit there but uh she good she good and believe it or not uh it's gotten here below 30 the last couple of days so she good wow i can't believe i'm out of breath but uh we got my favorite part out of the way and that is having the truck in the garage and jacking it up so now with the truck back in the garage i'm gonna take the uh, wheels off and my goal for today is to have at least the coil buckets on so oh, i'm gonna get to that real quick and uh very importantly uh well first i forgot to mention that before you jack up the truck make sure you break loose all of your lug nuts everybody should probably already know that but it's just way easier to break them loose with the breaker bar while everything's still on the ground and then just bust them off with the impact uh but once you have the uh, wheel off um i always like to put it under my truck uh just in case any of this hobo stuff um <laughs> any of this hobo freight stuff fails on me uh the truck won't completely crush me um it'll hopefully stop at the wheels so that's always a good practice to do is just take them off throw them under the truck uh, and hopefully uh we'll survive <laughs> anyway so now with the uh wheel out of the way the next thing you got to do is actually remove um your sway bar uh bolts just these because trust me with the sway bar on and the uh, radius arms this thing is not going to flex enough to uh, take off the coil springs so to make our lives easier like i said we'll go ahead and um remove uh, the top bolt i like removing both just to make sure that it's all out of the way and uh once that's off we'll remove the shock um and that'll give me enough uh space to drop the axle and remove the coil and then after that obviously the coil bucket so i'm gonna go ahead get that done and like i said i really want to have this done uh the coils at least uh today before the uh, sun sets so i've got about four three and a half hours ish to get this done so i'm gonna go ahead jump on that real quick and i'll update you guys once um this part of the uh swap is done so yep you guys know those days when you're like damn how did i you know do that i'm so stupid <laughs> um that is definitely today uh the reason why i took the old coil buckets out was to fix pretty much two things mainly one was that uh bend uh that i already showed you guys and the other one was to just make some small adjustments to the uh bolt holes to make them line up perfectly and i did both of those things but somewhere along the line either i forgot to save something or something happened um where the adjustment that i did to the bolt holes didn't save didn't i don't know what happened to be honest with you. i know that i adjusted them because i checked like two or three different times to make sure that i had adjusted everything properly and that it would fit and like i said it just didn't transfer uh, and it sucks uh, it's no big deal like i said i mean these other ones i was able to make the, make it fit but i wanted to make sure that were that they were 100 percent um but yeah definitely sucks i'm gonna i'm gonna go back right now to the computer make those adjust sorry i'm gonna go back to the computer right now and make those adjustments um just so i know for sure that they'll be right for the next one and i'm gonna double and triple shake everything um just to make sure that they're right uh but yeah like i said it's just really sucks that i messed that up uh but yeah i mean it's not, it's not a big mess up like i said it's just it's just frustrating um but yeah anyways as you can see i've got the first coil bucket uh on the truck it is looking really really good um i'm gonna go ahead throw the rest of the bolts on there 
and uh, jump on the other side. Okay guys, so it is a couple of days later and uh, that's basically because I actually went back and kind of fixed all the mistakes that I had on the coil bucket. Um, honestly, I was kind of trying to rush myself to get the uh, video uploaded last Thursday, but I decided that it, it wasn't worth it. Um, I'd rather do everything right right now, get everything perfect. Even if that means that the video, you know, is going to be a few days late, um, I think it's just way better that way. So anyways, I did do that. I went back, I fixed the mistakes again. Like I said, I, I had everything right on the computer, but something didn't save uh, when I emailed it to my plasma cutter and it got cut wrong. But as you can see, all of the bolt holes are nice and aligned. Everything should slide right in. Um, and obviously if you install this, these six uh, bolts are holes that are already on your frame. These four are for your shock tower. These two are for your bump stop. So like I said, everything should be there. And if you can save your bump stop, you should be able to put it right back on there. It's just gonna be a quarter inch uh, lower, which uh, it's actually not a bad thing since uh, if you go to a Super Duty, you're most likely gonna gain probably around an inch to two inches, depending on how sagged your OBS uh, beeps were. And if, you know, if your Super Duty coil springs were pretty fresh, you know, and what rating there were, there's just a lot of things that kind of affect it, but you can go from no lift to up to like two inches of lift. Um, on this truck, the way that it was set up with an added lift on the, added leaf in the front, and then this thing actually had the uh, heavier duty springs, it set pretty high so honestly in this truck i think if i would have used the stock super duty springs i would have probably lowered my truck a little bit to be honest with you guys uh but like i said mine was already it had a natty leaf on the front so i had a little bit of a lift and stuff like that but anyways uh, <laughs> um i talk a lot but i'm actually really really happy with the way that this coil bucket turned out uh it looks in my opinion just I, <laughs> it's probably my baby, so I think it looks freaking beautiful. You know, I, I spent so much time working on this, making sure that everything was right. Like I said, I wasn't gonna not have those bolt holes, you know, perfect. And that doesn't mean that, you know, I wasn't gonna make sure that they were perfect before I sent them. Um, I was gonna correct them to what they what they should be. And I have, like I said, a few guys waiting for these things to test out for me. Um, thanks for all of you guys that are participating in that. Um, but I just wanted to be 100% sure that even before I sent it to those guys that were going to test it, they were 100% on my truck. That way, I know that if I send it to you guys, I sent, you know, a product that I know 113% that is going to fit on your truck. Okay, guys, so I don't know exactly where I left off on that last video. I think I was complaining about how I messed up the uh, quill bucket somehow. Anyways, <laughs> I got all that fixed. Everything fits perfectly now. Um, you know what? Let me open up the garage door. So it's actually getting kind of chilly here in my uh, part of the country, which I mean, I like it. I'd much rather it be cold than uh, hot, but it also does suck. <laughs> Anyways, oh, well, if you look at that, it's actually snowing, sorta. Probably won't be able to tell, but there's a little bit of snow coming down, which is cool. Anyways, we've got our coil buckets uh, installed completely. Um, absolutely love the way these things turned out. Uh, very, very excited about how they look. We finally have our radius arm brackets also completely finalized. They look, I, I personally love the way they look. I think, I think they look super tough. I really like the way that I did this little tie piece together. Uh, right there, love the way that it looks. Um, and again, I made these basically To simulate the OEM uh, buckets as much as I could. So as you can see, we've got a very similar tie piece right there that ties both uh, halves together. Um, these have four bolt holes on the outside, so do mine. And then on the inside, we also have three bolt holes like they did. So uh, the only thing that I wasn't sure on is if to leave them kind of separated like these ones are versus welding them. Um, I kind of chose to go ahead and make everything one piece so it is welded, stitch welded on on the inside and the outside of there. Um, I just kind of felt better about doing that. Um, but yeah, again, I absolutely love 
the way they turned out. Um, so now all we have to do is go ahead and install them on the truck. I did also go ahead and make a couple jigs for the radius arm brackets. Um, the coil buckets, they basically just, everything has to be square, but it's pretty easy. Uh, you can't really mess anything up. These things, it's really important that the inside piece matches the outside piece. So I went ahead and made a couple of jigs that will hold basically everything uh, the way that it has to be. So these two uh, holes are square to each other and then these ones and these ones will be square to each other. So yeah, definitely very, very happy about this. So now basically the way that these get installed on the truck is that the outside holes are already on your frame if you have a four wheel, four -wheel drive truck as well as these two bottom ones. Uh, you will have to drill pretty much all of them uh, bigger to at least half inch, 916s. Uh, and then you will have, if I remember correctly, this one, because I used the one, uh, this bolt hole that I had already drilled uh, in my frame. And I'm, like I said, I'm pretty sure that I had to drill that one because it was existing on the radius arm bracket, but not on the frame. So you will have to drill that one out. Um, but again, it's uh, it's pretty easy. Man, I really gotta get this truck finished if it's gonna snow. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it's really, really easy. All you have to drill, do is drill one new hole, drill six holes out. Um, and the way that I would do it is I would go ahead, clamp the uh, bracket on the frame, get everything as centered as you can. And now, like I've said before, I don't know what the tolerance is or whatever from Ford were. So things might be shifted a little bit. They might not be 100% centered uh, in that bolt hole. Uh, but everything should be close. So like I said, I would, I would clamp this, make sure that everything fits good. Uh, drill out your first hole, make it bigger. Put your bolt in it. Uh, get that one tight again again make sure that everything's tied up against the frame so the bottom is tied up against the bottom the side is tied against the side and then the way that I like doing stuff like this is basically one hole one hole at a time so you know start maybe like right here drill it out pretty bold get it snug not tight but you know snug and then do your next one um, using basically the the bracket kind of as your template up on the frame same for like your coil buckets I would Again, get it, get it on the frame, get it clamped, make sure that everything's nice and tight. Um, then these six um, will already be on your frame. And I actually believe that they're the right size. You don't even gotta drill them out. I believe, I'm 90% sure. Um, the only two that you will have to drill out are these two. And like I said, um, these have adjustability side to side. Um, and if you're going from the OBS setup, just drill your hole uh, as far that way as you can. It'll just make it easier. Um, but yeah, I've definitely been talking way too much in this video. I'm gonna go ahead, get everything installed, get the truck uh, back in its wheels, and then uh, hopefully we'll take a shot. Um, we'll finish off the video with the truck outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Okay guys, as you can see behind me, and as you can hear behind you guys, the uh, truck, <laughs> the truck is out of the garage and is in on the driveway. Uh, I actually just came back from a small test drive, and I think I think we got it. Uh, she feels super solid, super straight. Uh, definitely very very happy with the way that it turned out. Uh, sorry that it's running. It's not just because it sounds amazing. Um, the batteries were actually dead when I went to go start it, so I had to drum start it with the crew cab. But, um, so I'm just gonna let it run to make sure that the batteries get a full charge on them before I, I put it away. But anyways, guys, uh, let me just show you. So yes, as like I said, this thing is back on the road, looking and feeling amazing. But yeah, like I said, we've got our coil bucket. Our coils look good. Radius on brackets, all the other brackets we already had. Everything looks freaking amazing. I love it. And uh, I honestly couldn't be happy with the way that it rode. Uh, it was a small test strip, to be honest with you guys. Um, but I did go over some nice straight roads, some bumpy roads, some dirt roads. Um, and everything felt really, really nice. Uh, 
definitely really happy with it. So, now we can move on to basically uh, stage two and three of all of this stuff, which is gonna be stage two. Uh, it's gonna be taking it to get aligned. Uh, just to be sure that everything can get aligned back properly. Um, so that's gonna be probably next week because I'm, I'm predicting that they're gonna be closed uh, this week because uh, it's right before New Year's, which by the way guys, Happy New Year's. Uh, and again, Merry Christmas if I didn't say that uh, earlier this video. I started this video the week before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, it's definitely taken me a little while to get everything done with the holidays and whatnot, but every second that I had available to work on this thing, I definitely tried to work on it. Um, but again, super, super happy with it, with the way that it drove, that it feels. Um, it's, I, I had gotten used to the crew cab and the crew cab is a very comfortable ride, but like compared to this thing, it feels loose. Um, I don't really know how to explain it properly, but it just feels loose, you know, like it feels worn out. This thing feels tight. Um, it's definitely a little bit rougher than the uh, crew cab. Uh, not by much though, but it feels tight. Like everything feels tight on it. The steering, everything feels amazing. Uh, super, super happy with it. Um, but yeah, like so I'm gonna start putting miles on it. Uh, I already know the next couple of projects uh, that I'm gonna do on it. Uh, I have to get new battery cables for it. I'm thinking that, that might have been part of the problem of why it didn't start. Um, one of the terminals is completely jacked up on it, so I'm gonna have to uh, figure out something with that. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Um, if it's not the next video, well, I'm thinking probably the next video, we're gonna take this thing on a drive. We might take it off-road if I can coordinate with the body of mine so we can go out and do some light off-roading with it. Um, just have fun with it i really really truly missed driving this thing so i'm gonna go ahead shut it off we're gonna end the video right here uh guys this was a long one so whoever's still here thank you leave a comment down below that would really help so help us um oh i never said uh part three to this thing is gonna be getting a few kits out to some guys that had contacted me they said they could test them out um asap so after we get it aligned and it checks out Probably first thing next year, I'm gonna get a couple kits sent out to a few of you guys just to make sure that everything fits on your trucks and everything looks good. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be uh, step two. But again, super, super excited and happy about this. Um, very, very excited. Um, but yeah, again, leave a like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, we'll see you for the next one.